How's it going, everyone? My name is Dave, and welcome to another episode of talking about Eric Erickson's Eight Stages of Psychosocial Development. Last time, kind of discussed um, the idea of identity versus role confusion, or as many people know it, identity crisis. Today we're going to be talking about intimacy versus isolation. Now, at this point, you guys probably have already noticed a pattern if you've been following along with these videos. Each prior one has a tendency to connect to the ones afterwards. Now, if somebody goes through an identity crisis, they have a very hard time of not being isolated. They try to keep themselves in a manner of speaking, locked up, or they try to hide themselves from the world. Over time, people develop a sense of mind, regardless of whether it's positive or negative. It really depends on your given circumstances. For me, I've hit the point of intimacy, but I'm not going to lie. When I turned around, when I turned about 21, Pretty much isolation was the way to go. I wouldn't do very much outside of spending time at home, maybe hanging out with very, very, very few friends that I had. Um, but the thing is, the friends I always made came to me rather than the other way around. I've all, kind. It, this is kind of a better way of looking at intimacy versus isolation. Let's look at it this way. Extrovert versus introvert. This is where that part really starts to settle in. So we're going to look at it like that, just to kind of give a better hindsight of what I'm talking about. By the time you're between the ages of, when you go through what's considered a midlife crisis, that's when you're reaching the end of this particular aspect. But by that time, you've definitely solidified whether you're an extrovert or an introvert. You're an extrovert, intimacy shouldn't be much of a problem. You're up front, you go forward, you approach the world with all, I'm ready for this kind of mindset. Introverts, well, they lock themselves up, door shut, don't bear, that. some of them don't ever let a single individual in. Um, but then there are some people who are kind of at that midpoint. That's why this particular stage, intimacy versus isolation, it's a very blurred one, because there's always that group of individuals who do both with set circumstances. And it makes things very confusing, to say the least. I guess, depending on how your mind develops and sees other individuals, will really determine which of these categories you end up falling under. Um, take me, for example. Like I said earlier, when I was about 21, I was pretty much an introvert. I was extremely shy. I would barely approach anybody. Um, eventually, I came out of that shell more or less. I'm still kind of part in it. I only hang out with, like, outside of my fiance and my family. Um, I really only hang out with Aaron, but that's about it. And sometimes Dan uh, D9, or Danny. Uh, but he's a busy man, so it makes it very difficult to even do so. But I digress. One thing I've noticed is more that... To put it into perspective, this kind of thing can shift as long as you're still in this age range. I've noticed this in many individuals, myself, uh, being one of them. I'm more of a introvert, extrovert. I'm kind of that midpoint individual now than anything else, but there are some who swap sides entirely. They'll be an introvert and suddenly be only extrovert. Uh, they'll be an extrovert get impacted in a negative way and suddenly become an introvert the rest of their life. Um, it really just depends. In any case, 
I don't know. These are my thoughts on the matter. There's not much outside of comparing to the two. There's not much I can really use to talk about intimacy versus isolation since what we've what I've been discussing is basically what that is. So one way or the other, I'm going to leave this here. What are your guys' thoughts on this particular topic? Let me know in the comments below. If you missed any of the different um, other stages, why not click the like, hiccups again? What the heck? Hmm. Why not click the link on the side of my head over here where it'll take you to the rest of the stages that are uh, publicly visible as of now? Whether it's all of them by the time you see this or some of them, I don't know. Uh, or if you have an interest in some other kind, maybe you'll be able to find it on this side where YouTube will give you a recommendation. If that's not quite what you're looking for, check out the channel itself. You might find something there. In the meantime, I'm going to head off. Thanks again for tuning into this episode of the 8 Stages of Psychosocial Development, guys, and we hope to catch all of you in another video. See you guys later.